This is a video about the 6502 badge kit I recently bought and built. V6502 is a microprocessor that drove the Commodore, the Apple, and other of the early computers. The kit is a minimalist system that has only six ICs. It also has an LED display that scrolls a message which you can change by a terminal program like TerraTerm. The ROM that's included has a monitor program and EH Basic, which is a basic that uses line numbers like a lot of the old computers. The kit came with good printed instructions and was pretty easy to build. It took a couple of hours for me to build it, but most of that was just planning for the sockets that I used. There are a couple of videos on YouTube that show building the uh, badge already, and I'll link to those in the description. I changed a few things while I was building it so I could use it for other things besides driving the LED display. I used sockets for all the ICs and the display was socketed so I could remove it to get access to the 15 output lines. I'll show a few pictures now showing the mods that I made mostly involving the sockets. This is the 2K RAM chip. It sets directly beneath the 32K EEPROM. Here's the EEPROM setting in its socket. The sockets are SIP machine sockets stacked too high. This gives enough room for the RAM to set underneath the EEPROM. This shows the socket for the LED display. It's made up of female headers like you would see on an Arduino. The LED display wouldn't make reliable contact with the headers. The pins on one side of a display were shorter than the other side, so I trimmed them all to the same length and added these male headers to make better contact. And here's the display plugged into its socket. Now I will show the jumper settings for the 2K RAM and 32K EEPROM. This is the 2K RAM position for the jumper on the bottom of the board. Here are the jumpers on the top of the board. For ones on the right, select the RAM and EEPROM size. The one on the left selects the R65CO2 Rockwell part that comes with the kit as the processor. I've been using the common CH340 USB to serial adapter to connect the badge to my computer. It also provides power to the badge. I replaced the 6-pin connector that came with the badge with common mail headers. This just makes it easier to use the wire jumpers that I already had. There are four wires connecting the USB adapter to the board, 5 volt and ground, and RX and TX. The RX line of the USB adapter goes to the TX line of the badge, and the TX line of the USB adapter goes to the RX line of the badge. Since I want to add things other than the LED display to the badge, things like an LCD display, I decided to build this power breakout board. It is made up of two rows of male headers, one for 5 volts and one for ground. I've been using the TerraTerm terminal program for serial communications with the badge, so I'll walk through its settings. Some of the important ones to notice are the backspace and delete key checkboxes. Under the serial port setup, you'll have to set it to 9600 baud and the COM port you're using. Also notice the transmit delay values at the bottom. They're important for when you want to copy and paste things. TerraTerm seems to be a decent free program, but there may be better ones out there. The badge supports save and load by the X modem protocol, but I haven't got either one to work yet. Maybe I just don't have one of the settings in TerraTerm right. Now let's get into actually programming the badge. It boots up into the monitor. You can use a question mark command to bring up the help screen. If you want to change the message that the badge is scrolling, use the S command followed by the text that you want it to scroll. The location hex E4 holds the scroll speed for the badge. 
a value of zero will disable vScrolling and putting the default speed of 70 back in will start it back up. Now let's use the at command to get into EH Basic. It will prompt for a memory size and hitting the enter key will let it calculate the size automatically. However, with the 2K RAM, uh, it does not do this correctly and it'll cause a problem and I'll try to demonstrate that. First, let's print hello in direct mode just to prove we're in basic and then we'll type in a short program. It runs, but it seems kind of slow, so let's turn off the scrolling LED display with a POKE E40. It still seems pretty slow, so let's show the source of the problem. In the EH Basic source code, there's a variable called null count in location 13 so let's see what's in location 13. There is a 170 in it so let's put a zero in it and see what happens. The program seems to print to the screen much faster and the listing of the program seems to work much faster. Now let's use the SYS commands to return to the monitor. From the monitor, the pound sign is supposed to do a warm start of basic, but it fails also and just returns to the monitor. Let's start basic again with the at command, but this time we will enter the memory size directly with a value of 2048 for our 2K RAM. The null count variable holds a value of zero now instead of 170 and it shows a different amount of free memory. Let's enter our short program again and run it just to make sure that it works properly. It seems to work faster like it should. We'll also exit with the SYS command to the monitor and try a warm start of BASIC. The warm start works and our program is still there. I'll use a different terminal program called Real Terminal to show what the 170 null count was doing to our serial transmissions. Entering and running the same program we were using before shows that after every carriage return, 170 null characters are sent. TerraTerm just wasn't displaying these characters. I've tested a 32K RAM chip on the board and the automatic memory sizing works correctly on it. Let's start up BASIC again and enter some short programs. I'll just use copy and paste to copy the programs from Notepad into the terminal program. In TerraTerm, right-clicking the mouse will bring up a box that will let you paste the clipboard into the terminal. 
first is just a short program to print Fibonacci numbers. I use a Poke E40 to turn off the scrolling display. It seems to get in the way sometimes. I found an old game online called Mugwumps, so I thought I would try to get it to run on the 6502 badge. All it really took to get it running was to delete some of the print statements at the start so that it would fit in the 2K memory, and I also had to change the random statement. The object of the game is to find the four mugwumps hidden in a 10x10 grid. The program provides feedback as to how far from each one you are and you're supposed to calculate its location from that feedback. I'm not very good at it so I'm just going to cheat. Since the random number is seeded with the same value every time the program runs, the mugwumps are hidden in the same places, so I'll just print out the locations in immediate mode. The point of showing this game is to point out that a lot of old code written in BASIC can be run on the 6502 badge without much effort. Now let's try to display something on the LEDs. The badges outputs are provided by two 74HC273 latches on the board. When an address of hex 8000 or above is written to, the 8 bits of the data line and the lower 8 bits of the address line are latched onto the 74HC273s. Bit 7 of the data latch is used as the serial outline. The display has seven digits and each digit is made up of seven segments. It also has seven discrete LEDs but two of them are used by the reset circuit and can't be controlled through the latches. The seven segments are anodes of the display are driven by the data bus. It's a common cathode display so each digit's cathodes are driven by bits one through seven of the latched addresses. Bit zero of address latch is used for the cathodes of the five discrete LEDs. To display a number, do you have to put the bit pattern of the LEDs you want lit on the data bus. They are the anodes of the LEDs, so a one bit means the LED will be lit. You also need to select which digit you're lighting up by putting a low on its cathode and leaving the other cathodes high. So to make the leftmost digit of a display number 7, we can try this poke. But it won't work because the serial output routine that displays the ready prompt overwrites the output latches. So we need to keep our program running with a loop at the end until a key is pressed.
If a binary number that's being added to the 8000 address has bit 7 low, that's the line hooked to digit 7's cathode. The binary number that's being poked into that location is the bit pattern for the number 7. If you change line 10 so that the number we're adding to 8000 had bits 7 through 4 low, then the 4 left digits display the number 7. To display a multi-digit number like 1, 2, 3, 4, you'll need a program that scans the display. In this program, the data at line 1000 holds the bit patterns for the cathodes. Only one cathode is low at a time. That's the one you, that's used to select which digit you're displaying. The data in lines 1010 to 1080 holds the patterns for each number from 0 to 9. The inner for loop displays the numbers 6 through 0 starting at the leftmost digit. The outer do loop just repeats until a key is pressed. But strobing is caused by the camera and you don't see it with the naked eye, although there is some flickering if you display enough digits. This next example displays the number that increments with each received character. Each key press increments the number being displayed. The number variable is then converted to a string and the len and midstring functions are used to extract the digits. The value function converts the single character back to a number. If I remember right, the leading zero is caused by the str function. It makes a space for the minus sign and a negative number. I just didn't bother to trim it off. In a future video, I'll show how to remove the LED display and hook up an HD44780 LCD. Until then, you can try it yourself. Since two of the LEDs on the display were used by the reset circuit, you'll need to add your own red and yellow LEDs. You can see them plugged into the header. Here are drawings of how the latched address and data lines map to the display header and how the LCD is connected to the header. Thanks for watching.